Okay. Important with voice is knowledge develops through discussion and debate. So you need to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk to other people. Tell your story using the structure. Okay. I think I can uh, talk and write. Talk and write. Yes. But if you talk, 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 you forget, forget. Yes. So you talk and write yes. and then you... <laughs> and you know, I think people who struggle to write, it's really a good idea. Dot point all the ideas, pop in the references, and then sit and put your pet, your teddy bear, your wife, your child, put them in front of you and tell them the story using your dot points. If you don't want to make someone in the family suffer, then put your teddy bear or your dog or your cat and tell them the story, right? Mm -hmm. Just practice telling the story and then writing it. You will be amazed how much better your English is if you tell the story than if you try and write. You can always clean up and make it more formal later. But write it, write it, write it as you tell the story. And then, of course, you will think, is it formal or informal? Can I use I and we? Or must I use passives and actives? The key thing is, every sentence, when you get to the editing stage, you must be able to know every single sentence who is talking. So when you're editing for voice, you're looking at two things. Who is talking and how are they talking? And you need to check each sentence. So for example, this one, there are several definitions of critical thinking. That's like a general. It's the general discipline knows this. It's common knowledge, right? Sievers defines it as. Now, it's a, it's a de definition uh, with quotation, so I need the page number. And I'm checking sentence by sentence who's talking. Is it a group? A number of researchers, e.g. Smith et al. 2000, Rogers et al. 5, um, 2015, etc., etc. So is it a group of researchers talking? Is it one researcher talking? Is it common knowledge? I need to know from the citation and the grammar, sentence by sentence, who is talking. And then overall, the style, which you can check with your supervisor or your colleagues. OK, let's move on to grammar, language. OK. Now, before, oh, before we go on to language, this is kind of a linking one. Here is Turnitin Report. This is the software that checks for so-called plagiarism. Okay. Now, Turnitin, Authenticate, there are various ones. Here is a student in the disciplines, Turnitin Report. The color shows the text matching. Now, this first one says, N6 pathway is an aridonostic acid, AA. Is that plagiarism? You think that's plagiarism? No, it's discipline language. And I found up to 12 words in some disciplines in a row that are okay. That's discipline language, right? But if we look at this paragraph, do you think this is a problem? Look, it's all green, 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 green. The whole paragraph looks exactly the same. That's probably a problem. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter the color. It's matching with an article. Okay, so many people say, oh, I can't have more than 15%, or I can't have more than 12%, or that's irrelevant, the percentage. It's looking at each match. Is it discipline language or am I copying the English? Now, if you are not sure, this is the process that we suggest, uh, my colleague Carrie Callie-Gurin and I, is that you use Turnitin or other text matching software along with software that checks for disciplinary language. And the example that I want you to do, you can all find for free on the web, is software called, it's an um, Springer Exemplar. If you type in Springer, S-P-R-I-N-G-E-R, dot Exemplar, E-X-E-M-P-L-A-R. Springer Journal Company has put a searching function 
on all their journal articles. So if you think, have I copied this from one article or is this discipline language? I'm not sure. You can put it in there and it will search through millions and millions of research articles on the web. And for example, one of you said congestive cardiac failure. Look here. Whew. So many examples. This is obviously a discipline phrase that I can use. So it can help me with that. It can also help me with which words fit with it, which prepositions come before and after words. So it can also help me with my grammar. I will give um, Henriette and the other people some shorter versions of this workshop um, where we talk specifically about concordancy that you can put up on, have a look on your website. But it can help us with that. It can also help us with grammar mistakes if we're not exactly sure. Here someone gave me update dependent on case management. Okay, and I typed it in and I looked and there was no matches found. Now that's one of two reasons. One, it could be a grammar mistake. Two, it could be that it's a very specialized term and you might want a topic specific corpus. And I will tell you in the, work, in the little workshop on how to create your own topic specific corpus. But this case, I actually think it might be a grammar mistake. So if I look at update dependent and I type in that, I can see when to update dependent objects. So that dependent is being used as an adjective chosen at random and updated dependent on. So maybe it needed the ED. So this tool can help you check for your grammar, but it can also help you check is this discipline language or am I copying from one example. So that might be useful for you as well. Another important thing that you might want to do uh, so I've got some examples of these different things and what, you, what to do to help students who are struggling. Okay, so I've got some examples of different students. But if I want to have a good academic voice, I need to reduce the number of words. So try and cut down, cut down, cut down and take notes. I need to reuse the correct words, the discipline words. And I need to recycle, bring together things, right? To create my own ideas. Okay, so we can use the recycling metaphor. Okay, self-editing, what can you do? Here are some resources, including grammar rules, and also using these corpora to help you check your language for the vocabulary. Another suggestion that I have is to get someone else to edit. Your friend, you check your friend's mistakes, your friend checks yours. My biggest suggestion, and we didn't get round to it, but here are some examples of students' work where I didn't find many mistakes, the third one, for example. But to do the self-editing for language, you can't read from beginning to end. You've got to read it differently. And the way to read it is to read from the bottom of the page. So you start at the bottom of the page, sentence by sentence, and you just read for grammar. Because otherwise your brain is reading for content, it's reading for plagiarism, it's reading for linking. You're not going to see your grammar mistakes, I promise you. But if you read from the bottom of the page one sentence at a time, 10 sentences, take a break. 10 sentences, take a break. Do something else. Because your brain will go mush doing more. You will find hundreds of mistakes in your own work. I promise you. So you've got to edit in a different way when you're checking for grammar and you can also, if you're not sure, check up in the concordance 
as you go along for the grammar as well. Okay, the last one is the formatting. If you want to check for formatting, another thing is to also look at one grammar error at a, at a time if you have many grammar errors. Okay, formatting. Instead of looking a couple of important things, at the composition stage in the formatting, set up your document. Learn how to use Microsoft Word styles. So you can set up the headings and you can update your table of contents. Learn how to use Mandalay so that you can pop your references in, in the correct format. Don't be like me with my masters. I ha was using, didn't, couldn't afford a computer. I was using three different computers. Some italics went this way, some went this way. Yes. Then it, I had external and internal examiner. The external examiner from America gave me a, uh, what we call it, a first, at my, like a high distinction. The internal one said resubmit because your referencing is inconsistent. In the end, I lost my first. I had a second, upper second for my for my dissertation just because of that, because it was a resubmit, mm. even though I got distinction in everything. Mm. So, learn Mandalay. <laughs> yes, okay, so learn the software, set it up nicely. Then in the editing section, instead of reading the document, for editing of formatting, actually look at it on the screen. Look at the green underline. That's usually happening because there's a problem with your spacing. You've put a, a space before the full stop. Look at the margins. Look at the layout. Look at the spacing between paragraphs. So that last one you can check by looking on the screen. Last but not least, I want to say, who does the editing? Well, you can pay an editor. You can get friends to help you. But in the end, you have to do some. Or else you will pay a fortune. And no one is going to accuse anyone because we're all taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. You do have to work together. And I am finished. I'm happy to answer questions. Sorry. We've gone over time. Thanks, guys.